Hey guys, Tis play game of Azure Dreams. It is a JRPG that came out for the PlayStation 1 back in 1997, actually 1998 in North America. Um, I've not played this game before, actually I haven't even heard of it, this game until recently, <laughs> from a person in my RPG Facebook group. So, you know, I'm always interested in uh, 90s JRPGs. I think this was the golden age of JRPGs, was the 90s. So, let's check it out. Is your dreams? The name seems cool. No idea what to expect from this game, though. Angel, okay. <clears throat> About to be reborn. <laughs> okay. This guy with the angel to take a nap. Sure, let's go with Cove because that's my default name, I guess. Or else. <laughs> it's a threat. I have to live my life happily. Or else. Guy. Okay, his name is Guy. Is that Final Fight Guy? That's the only other person I know who's named Guy. It's Final Fight Guy. <laughs> He's a boy. He looks just like me. Wreath. I guess this is the mother and father of me. Okay, so that's interesting. I start off this game being born. That's, um, I mean, there's some games like that, but most games you just start out pre-existing, right? <laughs> but in this game, you just you start off being born. So that's interesting. Co's dad. <clears throat> Nico. He doesn't have a name, he's just Ko's dad. Listen, Ko. Guy. But actually his name is Guy. <laughs> Let's take good care of woman. Oh. Okay. Now we get a CGI cutscene. This is an early CGI cutscene, of course. In the 90s. Guy made it to the top level. Guy is the only one that could possibly make it. <clears throat> Mons Baia. Gramp. Gramp. Actually, his name is Gramp. Not Grandpa, but Gramp. It's Guy's Familiar. Hmm. That means it's monster or something? No, oh, it's by Konami. I had no idea Konami made this game. Why haven't I heard more about this game then? It's a Konami game too. It's not even a small developer. <coughs> Whoa. 15 is the legal age to be an adult here. Huh. I guess in most countries it's 18, but in this game it's 15. Nico. Weedy. Yup. 
Oh, good morning, Nico. Can't you be a bit more gentle? Got my tomboy attitude, so there. She like basically jumped on top of me. Well, interesting. Uh, well, I look pretty similar to Guy, I guess. Red hair and everything. I don't have the blue hair of my mom. What the heck was this? Alright. This is, uses a pseudo 3D view. It actually reminds me a little bit of Shiny Force 3, actually. <laughs> yeah, it uses this pseudo 3D type of view. Oh, what's that? Monster Hut? What's this Monster Hut about? Yeah. I mean, the game is using 3D backgrounds, of course, but uh, the sprites are kind of done in a 2D style. It's interesting. I mean, a lot of PS1 games were like this, so it's fine. Jorda. Oh, I'm 15 years old. That's old enough to go kill myself. Ouch. I don't need you to tell me. Save the game for me, huh? Okay. Actually, what's in the safe? Oh, I see. It's basically storage. It's a storage, I don't know. Turn 15, everyone expects me to, uh, to go to the tower. Oh, here we go. We run. Nada. Oh, thanks. Jump. Oh, I can jump. Okay. It's kind of like, yeah, I guess it is a 3D game then. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Most of the games using uh, 2D sprites like this, they don't have this jumping ability. This game does. Oh, it's a weapon shot. Let's go here.
decision there's nothing decent left. Wow. I think this is the first time a shopkeeper told me that there's nothing good left. Like, yeah, I think this is the first RPG where a shopkeeper basically told me not to buy his items. Basically told me his items suck. Monster shop, buy monsters. Like, buy monsters, huh? Like a monster rancher or something? Case germs are run away from you. <laughs> Fifteen gold. Looks like you don't have enough money. The dialogue in this game is actually pretty interesting, and a little bit different than other JRPGs. It's almost like it's, uh, yeah, it's like very self-deprecating. <laughs> Here. Let me 
Did you work for you? <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, so you can actually... You can actually change your house here? That's interesting. I don't know how many other JRPGs were... You can modify your house. I never... I don't think I've played really any other... Or many other JRPGs that you can modify your house. I was like, what the heck, there's a carpenter in this game? That's you that's interesting and unique. Restaurant, okay. What's here? Patty. I don't have any food money, but yeah. I don't have any money though. Aw, oh, no money, guys. Soybeans tofu. What does this do anyways? Does this is restore my health? I'm guessing it restores my health. Crystal curry, spiral rice, chicken, shiny prawn, beef rice. Whoa, it gets real expensive. Look at those sushi. I don't even have any money for to pay this though. I'm just gonna dine a dash. There's four different batches of vinegar rice. You choose for a different selection of sushi. Wow, I'm guessing I'm just gonna dine and dash then. I don't have money to pay this. To that. Oh, right. <laughs> Maybe she, she adds some of her love to that. See, that's how they let me get away with it. Next time, bring enough money for what you're having. Wow. That's actually really cool. This game, I thought, like, I thought I wouldn't even be able to eat. But they actually let me eat. And they just make me do some work if I don't have the money. That's actually really interesting. Okay. This game is actually really cool. There's some interesting, unique scenarios that uh, don't appear in other games. I don't think other games will let me do that. <laughs> mm, interesting. He even makes a comment. Wow. That's really interesting. I can eat there for free, but then they make me do dishes. And he even makes a comment about that. <laughs> That's really interesting. I was like, I wouldn't be able to eat at all, right? I thought they wouldn't even let me eat at all, but nope. General store. Fur. <laughs> I don't have anything you would afford. <coughs> what do they have? Bed? Whoa, we can buy a bed. Canopy. Table, bonsai. Plant, carpet, 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 tiger fur. What? Okay, mark things to buy. And I can buy them all at once. You haven't got enough money. Interesting. So it looks like that's stuff from my... That's stuff from my house. This wasted discussion is costing me. Ouch. Munchie every minute, what the heck. Okay, the dialogue in this game is really interesting and unique. 
I didn't know I can buy stuff in my house. So is this a RP is this a JRPG or is this kind of like a simulator game? That's interesting. I can buy stuff in my house. And not only that, I can modify my house too. That's really cool. A fortune teller. Shula, the mother of Mon Spy. Okay. Okay, how do you enjoy life? Yes. Do you believe you cannot live through life alone? Yes. But you the opposite sex you truly love? No. So that people can become stronger. And there are people that are there to support them. Sure. Placing emphasis on your love life. Let your body be controlled by emotions and let your flame of passion. Yes, perfect. Mons by I won't fall in love with you, okay. Hmm. Interesting divinations. The fortune teller. Pretty big. A lot of people here. Hop. Change the appearance when it goes up. How big is this town? Jump up on here. Right. Not true. Jump on tables. Huh. juice in the bar. <laughs> right. Well, it's not like I had much choice. It still wouldn't let me order alcohol. What over here? Is this, a, is this a lamp? Like a genie's lamp? It's like a genie's lamp there. Here's 
another genie's lamp. And steal some of the food from my kitchen again. Just to get out of here before I scold you. Looks like I am a troublemaker. Reminds me of the uh, reminds me of the protagonist arc from Terra Enigma. He was also kind of a troublemaker too. Remember arc from Terra Enigma. Let's just get to the tower. Let's get going to the tower since I can't buy anything. Oh, it's the pool. because I can only see the bottom of these buildings. But there is a lot of buildings in this town, actually. <laughs> a lot more than I expected. Yeah, quite a few buildings in this town. What is this? So great. You're interested in horses. A horse? I don't know any horses that are purple. <laughs> what kind of horses are those? Alright, well, there's a lot of buildings in this town. <clears throat> I think that's most of them. Alright, let's go. Hume. That's a familiar, right? Monster Tamer. Reminds me of Monster uh, Rancher, right? <laughs> right? Aren't people in Monster Rancher called Monster Tamers? I think that's the same. Yeah, Monster Tamers. Yeah, it's kind of, it is kind of like Monster Rancher, right? But in that game, you uh, use CDs to create monsters. This game, I'm not sure which how you get other monsters, but we'll see. It doesn't have the soundtrack in Terra Enigma. Um, yeah, or the same kind of charm, but yeah. Nor does it have as deep a story as Terra Enigma, but this game's unique in its own way. Copper sword, nice. Sure. Sure, got it, man. Right. Oh, it's a 
equip it. Hmm, I wonder what other people... Oh, the monsters count as part of my party. Let's see. sword now. That's good. What's this? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, and uh, rock, paper, scissors thing. Okay, got it. kind of a real-time combat system. So I don't go into, I don't transition into any kind of separate screen for combat. It looks like um, it's kind of just like a real-time combat system here. Okay, interesting. Yeah, basically it's like real-time because there's no separate combat screen, no turns. This is I think. Many hidden traps that we actually step on. last time. He just gave me power. And this, and this tower is non-linear too. Seems like it's not linear. But heck, where'd he go? Why is he an item? 
<laughs> Why is this? What? He's a monster, right? Why is he in my items? I don't understand that. I don't get this. So this is like my items, my equipment, and my monster, so all in my items. It seems like they should separate that. This is food from familiar. Uh oh, that didn't actually recover any health. This is that's not for me. That's for my familiar. <laughs> so why does it allow me to eat it? Food for familiar. I give it to that. I give it to the familiar. I see. <clears throat> uh, how do I recover my HP? Time. I can see I'm recovering some HP, so I guess it takes some time. Yeah, okay. So it looks like I recover my HP over time as I walk around. Let's see, I'm slowly recovering my HP. Oh no shit. Oh no shit. Oh shit. Look at all these monsters. trapped. Okay, these monsters, they just show up. And they always attack in real time. So they kind of just like sandwich me. <clears throat> what the heck? Oh no, am I stuck at the beginning now? Oh my god, don't tell me I'm stuck at the beginning of the game again. This is the beginning of the game. Again. Looks like the game just kind of reset. Um, okay. Well, let's try again. I guess. Oh no, maybe it isn't. Oh, okay. Interesting. Maybe just respawn at my bed every time? Is that how it works? Priscilla, am I familiar? What happened to my familiar? No, I don't have a familiar, what the heck? Okay, my familiar is gone. He didn't, he didn't appear this time. That's weird. How come I don't have a familiar this time? Have... No, I don't have my sword either. So it's... I'm not sure, did I just reset the game or what? But that familiar didn't come back. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh, he died. So I wake up again in my place. How come the familiar didn't come back? And they wake me up again, of course. Okay. I don't get it, so... I don't get the familiar again? I don't understand. So how come we got it last time? Yeah, like, come here, where's the familiar? He's not here anymore. How do I get him again? I don't get it. He's gone. How come he doesn't come back? He doesn't come back, what the heck? 
I think I need the familiar to survive, so why doesn't he come back? understand how why I do not get my familiar back. So I died and then it seems like I get I get reset. The game resets and I start back in my place again. But then I, how come the familiar doesn't come back? I don't understand. Let's try one more time. But without my without that familiar then there's not much I can do, right? Can't really survive long. a chance without my familiar and I don't know where it went doesn't seem like it comes back again that's weird hmm. oh here we go that's where it is Goes into my okay. I see. So the familiar responds in this room. And it goes back into my items. It must not be used here. Oh, interesting. Oh, now I have it outside. Okay, cool. Okay, so hmm. So basically, when I die, I respond at my house, and then my familiar responds in the monster room. So that's what it's for. I see. That's why I didn't appear again. Okay. Well, let's go back. Hopefully I stand more of a chance this time. Still need a weapon though. Still got no gold, so it's not like you can buy any weapons or anything. It's not like we sell any weapons either. Where's my familiar? There, I choose you. There, come out. Okay, now there's like more monsters in the forest. Or something. There we go. Much better. Now that I have a familiar. Okay, now I got some gold. Nice. The heck? <clears throat> I think this dungeon seems to be random every time. It's a little bit different every time. The monsters are different every time too. I definitely don't remember this many monsters before. So 
almost like a roguelike, right? I think this is almost like a roguelike. Meaning that the tower regenerates every time you go back, but it's different every time with different monsters. Seems like it. Ah. Dead. I slowly regenerate. Oh my god, look at all these monsters. So many. Wow, so many monsters. I keep coming. You ganged me up. <clears throat> okay. Well, this game's actually really interesting. It's like a roguelike. So every time I die, I respawn in my house. And every time you enter the, the tower, it's a little bit different. The monsters are in different places. Okay. That's actually cool. I don't think I know any other JRPG like this. It's from the 90s. That's very unique. Hmm. Okay, let's try it one more time. Get my familiar again. <clears throat> it's actually pretty addictive <laughs> because of its. The thing is, this game has a lot of replayability because every time it's a little bit different. Every time the, the tower is a little bit different. Okay. You're trying to get to the top level. Every level is basically, yeah, every every time the tower is a little bit different, because it's like a roguelike. Let's see. You just kind of see how far you get each time, it's just like with the roguelike. Alright, let's take out the slide. I guess you can get more powerful monsters as you go on. Oh my god, see so monsters again. Oh my god, there's so much damage. Oh my god, okay, I have to run away. So fair, so many guys come at once. Give me time to regenerate some health. It's actually almost turn-based. Oh my god, see? It's almost turn-based, because they don't move until you move.
And then every time you go up a level, it's like, yeah, it's basically like in a roguelike. You go up to the next level of the dungeon, and you just see how many how many floors you can do in one run, right? It's a really interesting concept, actually. Okay, I'm just gonna cover some health here. Yeah, so. And then it's almost like, it's not turn-based exactly, it's like... I wouldn't say it's actually real-time either, because it seems like every time I move, that's when the... You know, as in a game of Rogue or NetHack, right, the monsters don't make a move until you make a move. So, basically every time you move, that's like a turn. Yeah, really interesting. Four, baby. All right, let's see how long we keep going. How long can we keep this run going? Let's see. How do I get to this side? I don't even have a sword yet. In this run, I don't even have a sword. How do I get to that side? It's blocked. Layout of the dungeon actually seems similar, it's just the monsters are different. So stupid, attack diagonally. Oh my god, I have to be like direct. So annoying. They can attack diagonally, but I can't. I have to be directly facing them. But they can attack. They can attack diagonally. Okay. See, they can attack fucking diagonally. So cheap. Again. Yeah, I can even see on my little mini map here that the uh, the dungeon layout is very similar to that of a real game. It's being generated like that. Okay. And I kind of had to just find the the route to the next floor. That's cool. These items are just similar to items you would pick up during a run. And then when you die, of course, you lose all your levels and items. Makes sense. Basically gets you out of the dungeon. Restore is chaos. Okay. What does it mean restoring chaos? Turns into a frog for a while? Why would I want that? You mean it turns turns into a frog? A frog. <laughs> Why would I want to be a frog? That's weird. What is this? Gosh is here. You only want my help, don't you? 
No, thank you. What's he doing here anyway? Again, I think every floor is a little bit randomly generated. So every time is a bit different.
buy from the uh, go the general store I sell everything you don't need. Oh, she's so familiar with this. Oh wow, she knows a lot. Okay, now I'm back like this. <laughs> Same routine every morning. Yeah, I was gonna die, so I had to return back, right? Oh, where is he? Hmm, do I still have my familiar? I still have it, okay. Because I technically didn't die, right. I was going to die, that's why I had to return back. I'm still level 3. Good. Except I got restored to full health. Nice. And I got 122 gold! Yeah, I can finally buy stuff. But, anyways, I'm gonna stop here. This is a Zero Dreams. It's actually a really cool JRPG. I didn't expect it to be, like, so interesting, but it is. Um, it's actually unlike any other JRPG I've played from this era, like from the PlayStation or Super Nintendo era, because it's like, it's a roguelike. That's what's really cool. So first of all, the dialogue in this game is unique and interesting. Um, and then secondly, yeah, like every time I go in the tower, it's almost like a rogue RP like a rogue RPG. Basically, every time the monsters and floors are all randomly generated, and you basically see how far you can get in a run. So yeah, except this game used monsters and familiars and stuff. I guess you can collect different ones on each run and stuff. You can take five of them on each run or something. So yeah, it's actually a really cool, interesting concept that I haven't really seen in any other JRPG. So yeah, I haven't even seen any other JRPG like this since. This is a really cool one. Um, I wouldn't be like... I hope actually they... they uh, is there a sequel to this or another game similar to this? I'm not sure. But I hope they either remaster this game or re-release it or they make a sequel to it because this is actually a really cool game. Very unique concept. I haven't really played many other JRPGs or any other JRPG like this. Also wanted to mention that this game also has dating sim aspects and uh, city building aspects as well. So basically you have a JRPG which is at basically a combination of so many different genres, right? You have a roguelike dungeon crawler, you have city building in this game, which, you know, uh, we've seen once we go into the shops and you can kind of customize um, the look of your place, basically, the look of your house and what, what's inside your house. You can buy furniture for it and stuff. Uh, there's dating sim elements, which I haven't really got to yet, but apparently there is. And then the monster raising elements as well. So you have all that combined inside of this JRPG. So that makes it really, really unique and uh, special. So yeah, uh, I don't know why this... I don't know why this game isn't more well known, because it's one of the most unique JRPGs I've ever played, uh, especially for the era. And it's by Konami too, so yeah, I don't really understand why it's more... Uh, why it isn't more well known, why it's so obscure, because most people haven't heard of this game, um, including me, I haven't heard of this game before just until recently. So yeah, it's unfortunate, I hope more people can know about it, but I think it's a great game. So. So guys, uh, Zero Dreams, definitely a uh, very underrated, overlooked JRPG for PS1. Uh, so guys, thanks for watching.